Good morning. That was kind of weak, you guys. So, good morning. <laughs> hey, much better, much better. Uh, on this Palm Sunday morning, we have to all be bright and sunny and full of enthusiasm. So, um, thank you for joining us this morning on Palm Sunday as we begin Holy Week at church. Um, immediately following um, the call to worship, we're going to have a processional around the inside of the sanctuary. So if you're comfortable and you're able to walk, um, we're going to follow Pastor Sarong around, waving our palms. So if you don't have a palm, let us know. We'll make sure we get you one. Uh, if you are unable to walk uh, that, or prefer to remain seated, that's fine too. Just uh, stay where you are, but just we want to see the palms waving. Um, this week is our uh, last Bible study for Lent on Wednesday. Practical Prayers, A Guide to Praying Without Ceasing. It's at 6.30 in the Heritage Room, and there's refreshments, so um, you can always have something to eat when you're there. And this week's guide will be Trish Erickson. Uh, for Maundy Thursday this week, um, we are all invited to attend the service with Reverend Lindsay at Love Rising Church, which is on Maraz 21230. They are having a dinner as well as the service, and that begins at 6.30. Uh, our Good Friday service here will be held at 6.30 in this sanctuary. Um, we have some thrift shop news to make sure everyone knows. Our thrift shop, it's a new program that we have here to help sell furniture if you have some things you'd like to sell. There's a bulletin board that you may have noticed at right outside the thrift shop door, and there's some instructions there on how to get started. Um, a photo uh, needs to come, uh, Judy. Wave Judy so we all know it's you. There you go. Uh, Judy will uh, can help you if you need more information or Joanne and get you uh, get you started on that way and our last uh, piece of information here this morning is Brian and Joanne Shenstone are cooking for a hot dog dinner for the students of caught up on April 12th from 530 to 730 if anyone's available to help them I'm sure they would appreciate it's a hot dog dinner but I'm many hands make uh, light work so I'm sure they'd be be happy. So Joanne, wave, you and Brian, so they know who to talk to. Okay, perfect. So if anybody can um, give them some help, that would be great. So now let us pray the re to the responsive call to worship. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey. On, on a, a colt, colt, the full, the full of, of a donkey. donkey. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, aloud O, o daughter, daughter Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. So please please stand and we'll gather behind as the song as the hymn is played.
We cannot earn God's grace or favor. It comes to us, not as something owed, but as a gift freely given. Confident in God's love for us, even when we are ungodly, please join me as we confess our sins in faith. <clears throat> Loving, Loving God, God you rode a donkey, donkey and, and came, came in, in peace. peace. Humbled, humbled yourself and gave yourself, yourself for, us. for us. We confess we our lack of humility. humility. As, as you, you enter Jerusalem, Jerusalem the, the crowd, crowd shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, save, save us, us now. now. On Good Friday, they, they shouted, shouted crucify. crucify. We, we confess, confess our praise is often empty. We sing Hosanna, but cry crucify. As, as the crowd laid their palms in front of you, you, you took the way of God. You took, took no glory no for yourself. We confess that we, that we want, want to be accepted and take the easy way. way. We do not stay true to your will. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to follow in the way of your obedience. The, the psalmist assures us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us, even pursue us, all the days of our life. As God's forgiven people, receive this goodness and mercy and live a new life in the grace of Jesus Christ. We will live, live as children of the light, for Christ shines on us. Please. O oh Lord, may the words of your mouth be our daily bread, and may the leading of your spirit become our way. In Jesus' name, amen. The first Old Testament reading is Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. You can find this in the Old Testament if you want to follow along, or on the screen or in your bulletin. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. Is the Lord, it is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The next reading is from the Psalm 118. Verses 1 through 2 and 19, 19 through 29. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast, steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We will bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord.
The third scripture reading comes from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11, if I can get the Bible out. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave. Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Aren't they cute? My niece and nephew. We begin with the story of Palm Sunday in Jerusalem in the preceding verses before the scripture read today. Jesus and his followers had been in Jericho where he had healed two blind men and proclaimed, who proclaimed Jesus as the son of David. Having healed them, The two men join in Jesus' band of followers, which is gathering, growing in size. They regather at the village of Bethphage near the Mount of Olives. And this is where our scripture starts today. As the group arrives at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sends two of his disciples into the village of Bethphage to get a donkey and a colt for him. In today's scripture, they're told to untie them and bring them to Jesus. And if anyone questions them, they're to tell them that the Lord sent them to do this. Now, had Jesus set this up already? Was he up super early in the morning? Or was, was he, did he go by there last time that he went through and told the person who has donkeys and colts? Or did Jesus foresee this future? foresee this occurring. Those who argue for the latter version suggest that as the Son of God, Jesus might know such things. Jesus would know such things. However, what is important here is that we know and they know, the disciples knew, that Jesus had it all under his control. Interestingly, all the other accounts um, of this event only speaks of one animal, of the donkey, but Matthew writes about both, a donkey and a colt. 
Being the gospel written for those who knew scripture quite well, Matthew, he, it speaks to, and it makes reference to Zechariah 9, which speaks of the coming ruler riding into Jerusalem. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Whatever Matthew has in mind, Jesus is about to fulfill Zechariah's prophetic message, message, and the people know that. Now that Jesus has his donkey, he's ready to head into the city. As he rides in on the donkey, the people understand what is happening. At least some of the folks in the crowd know of Zechariah's vision of the coming king who will ride into the city in triumph. So as he entered the city, those who knew began to spread their cloaks on the road ahead of him, while others in this growing crowd began to cut down branches and lay down palms on the ground in front of him and spread them on the road ahead of Jesus. And as the people put out the welcome mat for Jesus, hypothetically speaking, not hypothetical, you know what I mean, (laughs) Um, the welcome mat, they started shouting his praises and singing, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When the people shouted the word Hosanna, Jesus, they were declaring him to be their Savior, their Redeemer, their Lord. What we don't have to consider as much these days is that when they said that, When the crowd said these things, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, it meant that they would soon confront the Roman occupiers. What Jesus does here, according to Matthew, is reenact a royal entrance. I'm sure we have all seen scenes in movies where a king or some royalty comes into town with elephants and horses and, and cannons and lots of bright flyers and flags and things flying above them. The people see this and acknowledge that this must be the one they were waiting for. Never mind that they didn't recognize him 30-some years ago when he came in a manger. But here is the son of David. This is Messiah. As you know, it's easy to get caught up in the frenzy of a crowd and not know exactly what is taking place. After all, everyone loves a parade. You may not know what you're doing, but if a parade is going on, you just go with it. Since not everyone knows who Jesus is, Some in the crowd begin asking, who is this person? Who is causing such ruckus? And those in the know reply, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This Palm Sunday is the fulfillment of the prophecy that Jewish people knew oh so well, but swept up in the celebration of it all. There is not an ounce of acknowledgement of the foreshadowing that is to come that is also in the prophet the prophet books we have the benefit of a canonized scripture that allows us to know what is going to happen in the coming days in this week that we call the holy week but a few things three things specifically strike me this morning as we read this narrative First is that there would be no Palm Sunday without obedience. I'm sure you know the story of when King Saul, as magnificent and as triumphant as he was, messed up many, many times, usually when he took matters into his own hands. Samuel says to him, God desires obedience, not sacrifice. And And Saul repeatedly not listening to that, he eventually loses the throne and Samuel goes to find a new elected king who we now know to be King David. 
It takes obedience, and in many cases, the movement of many players for a story to unfold the way that it does, and here to unfold in the way of the Old, Old Testament. These two disciples had to go to Bethphage. They had to untie the donkey and the colt, even though they, they knew they could be th people could think they're stealing. The owners had to let them go, lose these two animals. They had to walk back to Jesus, find him. It all started with obedience, just as Jesus is also obedient. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says, He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So I ask you today, my sisters and my brothers, what is God asking you to be obedient to today? Secondly, as we know in what is going to happen in the days to come, we know that anything can turn on a dime. Shortly after today's occurrences, Jesus celebrates the Last Supper on, on what we call Maundy Thursday, and then he is crucified, which starts the, another chain of events, which leads to his crucifixion and death, death on the cross on Good Friday. And then we don't have to talk too much about it yet, but eventually he rises from the dead as well, which we call Easter. We live in a world of quick media, quick this, quick that, shake and bake, minute rice. Things turn so quickly that our attentions are scattered. Mine too, mine probably more than non-millennials here. There are people who come to church on Sunday and turn around and forget everything that they said or talked or thought in church. They go about their weeks as if Jesus did not exist, as if they did not wholly focus on Jesus alone in the 45 minutes on Sunday morning. I think that is why Lent, in many ways, is such an important intentional practice. Lastly, Jesus respected the prophecy. Now we know that Jesus is almighty. He has the capability to turn water into wine, raise people from the dead, make blind man see, turn five loaves and two fishes to 12 overflowing baskets of food and more for 5,000 plus people. However, Jesus makes an intentional choice to follow the prophecy that was foretold so many years ago. And he respected that prophecy that was God-inspired through the use of a donkey and a colt and to death, and even to death on the cross. So I don't think we necessarily have a prophecy to live into or fulfill that is as grandiose as Jesus's. But we are called to obedience more than to sacrifice. So the question I leave you with today is what is God calling you to be obedient to? And what is God calling our church, Gross Point Woods Presbyterian Church, to be obedient to today? Amen.
As you may know, um, our beloved church member Sandy Fullerton is, has gone home, his physical home, um, on hospice. Please let us continue to keep him in our hearts and minds as we pray today and in our personal prayers as well. Our Savior comes to us humbly riding a donkey and proclaiming message of peace. Let us pray for the church, for earth and all its creatures, and for all people in need, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. That Christians hear and share the word of God as true disciples, that all ends of the earth receive the words of the King of Peace, that all leaders of church and of state prefer humble service to empty power. That all people live with gratitude for the gifts of nourishment, friendship, family, trust, patience, and hope, with the courage and wisdom to change whatever fails to be life-giving. That those who see the cross starkly revealed in their lives draw strength from the name that is above every other name, that we might live with gratitude for our ancestors whose faith and witness have nourished our own, that all who mourn today will be comforted, those who are sick will be healed, and that we who hope to greet Jesus when he comes again will be ready and filled with joy. God, our creator, you show our sons and daughters the way to freedom through the gentle obe obedience of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Amen. Let us rise to sing the closing hymn, A Cheering, Chanting, Dizzy Crowd. <laughs> Friends, go out in faith, trusting in God's sense of direction. Remember how much God loves this world and so love the world in the name of Christ, that your testimony becomes the good news that someone has been waiting to receive. Amen.